You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate that you are taking time out of your day to hang out with us. It means a lot to us, and it means a lot to the show. So thank you very much. This is episode 921. We're really excited today to talk about agriculture and what is a viable vertical for agriculture. Is agriculture and drones uh, more plausible as a vertical or are you going to run into more obstacles well today we're going to be talking about that and so much more in addition uh, i think it's really important for, you know if you haven't listened to the podcast with myself and on god sing from pix 4d where we discuss multi-spectral use and pix 40 fields i would highly recommend that you go back and watch that episode in addition we are planning on filming a class on this very subject in February or March of next year and where we will be heading to South America to actually be doing more of this testing as regulatory operations and hurdles uh, are significantly less. Yeah, on an actual coffee farm? Is that, that is right? correct, yes. Very I cool. have to set up the meeting to plan logistics here uh, next week. Very cool. Yeah, so very That's excited gonna about that. That's going to be some great information. We're also going to be partnering with Angud Singh and McGill University so that he can input this data into his thesis on the actual practical applications of multispectral use in agriculture using UAS. So this will be really deep, detailed information, and I'm really excited to, uh, to, to essentially go over that. But I probably shouldn't put all my drone new plans out there for everyone to know about. Otherwise, it negates the plan. Anyway. No, I don't think so. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and hear today's question, which is brought to you by our wonderful friends over at GPC Cases. If you don't have a case for your drone, just use discount code DRONEU15 when you buy your case from the Go Professional Cases website. Um, we are surrounded by GPC Cases. There's one right there. There's two right there. Uh, there's a lot of GPC Cases, and we love uh, what they're doing. And just want to say uh, thank you again. And... Uh, Rick and Beth, you you rock. So thank you. Anyway, check them out. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Cam, New Jersey. I had a question this week. Instead of mapping, I was going to talk more about agriculture. Uh, doing some research, I noticed that here in New Jersey, there's at least one farm that went out and got like a roughly $30,000 platform to uh, spray their own crops. And then I noticed also Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems has a platform, a DJI Argus. Uh, package they put together for doing uh, similar types of jobs and so i don't know if the model is you own a business already that or you own a farm i should say and you just go out and buy your own drone and do it yourself or are farmers going out and hiring that out as a service meaning they know drone pilot x provides agricultural services and they pay them five bucks an acre to come out and spray herbicide or plant food uh, fertilizer and, uh, you know, just get your thoughts on that. If you know any, anything about that in my area now, not that it's the market's dead, but, you know, between cinematography, real estate, even a little, mapping a little bit, it's all getting kind of saturated, a little beaten to death. Um, but I feel like agriculture and a few other avenues are kind of still up really in their infancy. And maybe, you know, as I near the plan for retirement from my, my full-time job, you know, what path am I going to go down with drone industry? Am I going to just stick to cinematography uh, or am I going to go down agriculture or some other type of service that isn't flooded with people yet? Just wanted to hear your thoughts on uh, that industry. If you know any examples of a successful business model and, you know, any other thoughts you have about it. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Another well thought out, detailed question. Appreciate it very much. As always, and if you have a question like Ken did, go to askdroneu.com. We'd love to hear from you as well. I do want to take a quick second and just say that because we are entering the winter time frame for a lot of uh, Northeastern and uh, just any pilots who kind of 
live, you know, above maybe the Colorado line across the country, um, I would say that this is a really good time to work on your business, to take and aggregate all the data that you've captured this year and make your 2019 reels, make your marketing material for 2019. I know that things are slowing down for a lot of people, but back in the day when I did nothing but my drone business and, and wasn't doing drone you, it was my, I, I love the holiday season because like, oh, Thank God. It's, things are going to slow down. I can finally work on the business instead of working in the business. And I just want to take a quick reminder for everyone to work on your business this holiday season because, uh, you know, you need to focus on quality, your niche applications, and you need to focus on educating your clients on what makes you different from other contractors. And that may mean showcasing your video and the smoothness versus competitors' videos that are public and online to show them, like, this is what you can expect. This is the difference in quality. This is what people will notice. This is what they won't notice. Um, I know we've talked about educating your clients and what you can do, but just understand that... Um, it's important that they can visualize the difference and that you're speaking to them in a dollarized value. And I think our last show, 719, uh, Rob really hit the nail on the head with um, pricing uh, value. I mean, gosh, that was such a good example, Rob. So um, anyway, so I just want to talk about that. Also want to say really quick, there are more uses for drones than just real estate. Um, and just construction mapping and just agriculture. Uh, we're finding that many, 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 many companies are looking into drone mapping and how they can use digital surface models. They're looking into how they can do water delineation reports with digital terrain models. They're looking at how they can do plot surveys with uh, you know centimeter grade orthomosaics and maps. Crime scenes are doing more ortho, ortho mosaic mapping. Search and rescue is doing ortho mosaic for command um, structure and planning. I mean, there are so many uses. You've got a niche down, but you also have to be able to, to communicate and orate your value to potential clients. So use this time that you have to work on that. It is so important. Yeah. Um, because, yes, okay, so a perfect example. Yes, real estate is one of those cheaper things because it's been overly saturated. It's always, you have people coming in who are always willing to do the work for free and without a license that is going to quickly come to an end um, with the new uh, reauthorization act that we just saw. But that being said, I think it's also really important that in real estate, if you go after big land developers or big ranchers, or you go after people who are only focused on serving a particular client and they're willing to work consistently with you, that's about niching down. So as we answer this question, just keep all of these things in mind as I believe that they're important for the, dis the discussion at hand. Love it. Good stuff. I, I Just one little thing I'd add is the age-old entrepreneurial pursuit is solving problems, right? So as you're thinking about uses for drones, constantly be thinking about what problems can I help solve mm -hmm. with this drone. Couldn't agree That's more. how so many businesses get started. Couldn't agree more. So let's talk about let's talk about ag really quick. Um, it's funny, man. I remember back at International Drone Day, which is no longer a thing anymore, five years ago, and I met the head of an association for farmers and ag who was at that particular meeting to really find out more about how drones can be used in agriculture. And I'll just say, if you're considering on using drones in agriculture, especially for spraying purposes, which we it has been known for a very long time that farmers who use planes to crop dust are wasting an average of 70% of the said material that is being sprayed onto plants because of the way in which they're sprayed. The rotor wash from the airplane goes behind the airplane instead of the rotor wash from a drone or a helicopter goes straight down, making the entire spraying process more efficient as a whole. In addition to that, a lot of people are using products like PIGS 4D Fields to say, hey, I understand that I can see diseases and I can see potential problems. And uh, using the word diseases is not proper. I can see potential problems two weeks in advance of what the human eye could see problems. So I know that I need to spray certain particular areas without spraying the entire farm as a whole. Or so, go back and do deeper tests in certain areas, that kind of thing. That's exactly right, Rob. And that being said, that's where the true value is to farmers and agriculture. I feel like I'm doing a commercial for true value. Ace Hardware, go. <laughs> I'm not, okay? I'm not, not at all. Not um, that there's anything wrong with them. Actually, did you know that I was a manager at an Ace Hardware in Taos one summer in the landscaping department? I did not know that. 
It was because I was coaching the lacrosse program up there. Really? I was trying to make some extra moolah. Huh. Very cool. Moolah, baby. Did not know that. Yeah, it really Anyways. really impressed my uh, mother-in-law, or not mother-in-law, my step, my sister's mom, um, okay. because I knew the, the genus and species of all the plants in her backyard. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you never know when that information is going to serve you, really, you. And I could not remember it now, so <laughs> I'm glad I made a good impression on someone. Right. But anyway, if you are looking in to get into agriculture, there's one document that you should really look up. It's called... Advisory Circular 137-1 Bravo. Again, that's AC 137-1 Bravo. Let me send you the link really quick, Rob. In this Advisory Circular 137-1 Bravo, it essentially describes an acceptable means, but not the only means, for an agricultural aircraft operator to apply for an agricultural aircraft operator certificate under Title 14 of the CFR Part 137. Part 137 dictates how pilots are, are uh, what they need to do in order to actually be able to spray. Part 137 is also a severe hiccup for a lot of farmers who want to be able to use uh, drones like the M is the Agris MG1 that uh, John McBride sells. Um, also for sale um, by a lot of other drone uh, people. I'm not trying to promote John. John does not pay for promotion in any way. And that being said, I've, I've heard that there are a lot of people who are not purchasing these agricultural drones simply because of the regulatory hurdles of 14 CFR 137. So is there there's a certification test for this similar to 107 or how does this work? No, it is not a certification test. It's more like applying for a waiver, essentially, if I understand oh, this correctly. Okay. It says that there is a certification process. So I guess that there is technically an operator certification process, yes, but you also would have to waive certain parts of 14 CFR 107, which talks about dropping anything from the drone itself. Sure. And is that, I wonder if that's part of, maybe I'm getting too into the weeds, if that's part of this certification, that is an ancillary benefit of it. Um, I, in or all honesty, I have thing. not read all 64 pages of this advisory circular to be able to answer your specific question in that manner. Cool. But I would guess that the answer to your question is most likely yes, yeah. um, that they do connect in one way or another. But I, if I understand 137, there are significant provisions in here. Like, oh yeah, for example, related reading material. Look how many documents there are. It's pretty significant. Um, yeah, so it looks like applicants should file an application for agricultural aircraft operator certificate with the responsible flight standards office. The certification process, the certification process for either a private or commercial agricultural aircraft operator is identical. Applicants must follow the same process for issuing the operating certificate. The operating certificate identifies the operator authorized to conduct private or commercial ag aircraft operations. The operating certificate will also display privileges to dispense economic poisons if authorized. Hmm. Then you have to go through part 133, which is rotorcraft external load operations. If operators hold a 14 CFR Part 133 rotorcraft external load operation certificate, they may conduct an agricultural aircraft operation that involves only the dispensing of water with uh, spreader additive on forest fires by ro rotorcraft external load means without having to meet Part 137 certificate requirements. UAS operations. If operators are conducting agricultural aircraft operations with UAS, they must hold an FAA-issued exemption. Certain regulations in 14 CFR Aeronautics and Space, e.g. Sections Part 45, 61, 91, and 137 may not be applicable to UAS operations. Therefore, the exemption provides a necessary relief. Okay. That's good. That's good information. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks like this is a significant process as they showcase the evaluation process in five specific parts. Pre-application phase, formal application phase, document compliance phase, demonstration and inspection phase, and certification phase. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty in-depth. Yeah, my watch just told me to start breathing. I'm stressing out too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So the bottom line is, if now this is all if you're going to spray. If you're going to do the analytical work... This doesn't apply. This doesn't apply. And I actually think that there is a significant vertical in training a farm to utilize something like PIX4D fields where they're doing mapping, utilizing a multispectral camera to get data. So if he's talking about, can I get into ag? Yes. The way that I would get into ag is I would work with farmers, go over these processes, see exactly what adds value to them. I mean, I just kind of went over a couple of value adds at the beginning of the show. 
But then so. also utilize that data and have reviews from those farmers that you can then go out and say, I can help you create a team to go into agriculture. Here's the systems, here are all these things and help those people out. Yeah. And if you can show them the science behind studies, et cetera, behind the waste that occurs using airplanes, for example, and then sort of from there get into the use of multispectral cameras and so forth. Yes, 100%. Powerful stuff if you can get them to listen to you, which that's step one. Yes. And also I would say that um, there is still a significant amount of confusion with NDVI cameras. You need an NDVI camera that is made for NDVI not filter swapping. So uh, really, really, really important. Also, your true data is going to come out of a multispectral sensor, which is actually individually measuring R, G, and B. Very important. So, Do you know of any pricing analysis on doing farm-related, agriculture-related jobs? I've not seen anything like that. It might be out there. Well, agricultural work is all about pricing per hectare. Um, or, well, you could do it per acre as well, because at the end of the day, every farmer knows what is the cost per acre, what is the yield per acre. And if you're able to say that you can, you know, hey, this data will give you two weeks prior time to deal with a problem rather than dealing with it when it happens, Mm -hmm. what is that value? What is that value per acre? What is that savings per acre? In addition, gosh, everything comes down to per acre. If you're affecting their yields and you can save them, say, $4 or $5 per acre, that adds up significantly if there's something like 1,000 acres because that's now $5,000. Right, and so how are you bringing value? One way is that you're reducing their waste from disease or whatever is causing those kinds of problems. True. Various ways that you can go to them with value, no doubt about it. Obviously, saving on the materials that they spray, saving on manpower about doing the various testing, increasing their yields, all those kinds of things are going to be ways that you can help them out. Totally true. Could not agree more. I'm just wondering if we really captured the question. A lot of people are getting into agriculture, but more on the interpretation of data side, not the application and spring side because of regulatory hurdles that make it very difficult to do these things. In addition, the regulatory hurdle of beyond visual line of sight, this is another perfect example of how having a systematic means for the FAA to actually provide BVLOS waivers for part 107 would significantly help agriculture. Absolutely. Because if you have a 10,000 acre farm, how the hell are you going to do it with a drone? Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. In a, in a in an efficient in, in way. In an efficient time yeah. that's actually going to give them actionable data that they can act on and provide right away. Uh, yeah. So. Specific reference to Ken, I could absolutely see him being the kind of person just based on all these now Deep diving years research. of questions from Ken. Yeah. I think that this probably would be a good vertical for you because of your ability to go deep into it and figure it out and make it happen. So obviously we're speaking that way to Ken. A lot of you have heard Ken's questions over the years and so if you're like him, then you could think the same thing about you man true 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 yeah 100 percent. cool all right guys well that is going to do it for our show today if you have a question go to askdroneu.com upload your question so we can answer it and also thank you for the feedback on the new shows with drone dj we're going to keep doing those since you're loving them so much so i think we're going to also be doing those on fridays so make sure you check out uh, drone news with drone you and drone dj on fridays check it out but thanks again for listening we do genuinely appreciate it and we really appreciate your support through the drone you community if you're not a member become a member today all right well my name is paul my name is rob and this is ask drone you (laughs) 